From the brilliant mind of Masaki Yuasa, who brought us masterpieces such as The Night is Young Walk On Girl, Ride Your Wave, and Devilman Crybaby, with a moving script written by Akiko Nogi, comes a historical tale intertwined with jealousy and death, an exploration of expression against oppression, but arguably, most importantly, a story of one blind and one cursed child making their way into rock stardom in 14th century Japan. This is Inu-O. Based on Hideo Furukawa's novel The Tale of Heike, the story is set after the Genpei War of 1180-1185, fought between the Ashikaga and Heike clans. After the war, the Ashikaga clan ruthlessly began to secure its power by burying the Heike clan through means of controlling his history and censoring stories. At the beginning of the film, one of the main characters, Tomina, and his father are commissioned to find a lost Heike treasure which violently reacts to their presence and causes Tomna to lose his eyesight, his father, and shortly afterwards, his mother to grief. Later, he sets out on a journey as a Biwa priest to preserve the stories of Heike through song. Soon after, he encounters the second lead of the film, Inu-O, a child born afflicted with a curse who gets shunned due to his physical appearance. As such, Inu-O keeps his face hidden behind a gourd mask. Inu-O and Tomna meet unexpectedly and begin to talk, where they find solace in each other and begin to learn from each other as well. As the film goes on, Tomna begins to adopt some of Inu-O's wild spirit, and Inu-O begins to pick up some of Tomna's sensitivity. Soon after, Inu-O begins to learn that he can hear the restless spirits of the Heike soldiers, and that he can lift his curse by performing their stories and reminding the rest of the world they existed. By listening to these spirits and their stories, Inuo and Tomna can create new performances that will shock the entire country, and soon enough they became the iconic music stars of that time. However, the government being as oppressive as it is, soon cuts down on these stories trying to tell the tales of the Heike clan, and Tomna and Inuo's troop get forcefully disbanded, with Tomna's beheading at the end. Besides the main plot, there is also a lot of background storytelling going on as well, with Inuo being born of a curse because of his father's greed, forcing him to yield to a curse mask that extracts the spirits of other Biwa priests that knew the hidden stories of Heike through sacrifice, sort of like a monkey paws situation. Throughout the film, there were multiple concerts performed by Inuo and Tomina, but the way they were done really brings in the relatability with modern day phenomenon. In short, Inuo's performances mix no theater with contemporary experiences of pop culture, with electric guitar sounds replacing traditional instruments and having grandiose stage performances we see in concerts today. Additionally, the songs performed definitely draw from modern day hits, as one song moves to the beat of We Will Rock You, and another borrows the operatic harmonies of Bohemian Rhapsody. But all this packaged into one film, despite how fantastical and jarring the mix of modern day music and 14th century Japan is, is what I loved about the entire experience. The immersion during the concerts where Inuo uses his unique physicality to do impossible dance moves, and tricking the audience into watching a stage act gives an astonishing illusory effect, as well as scenes highlighting how these modern day light shows were done with 14th century technology was cool to see as well. And even through all that, the characters feel distinctly human and the story feels grounded in reality. Even though the film pits art against an oppressive government, it isn't naive enough about the upper limits of being so outspoken. The pushback from the government leading to the eventual fall and death of Tomina, with Inuo yielding to the government and stopping his performances of the hidden Heike stories, is definitely tragic in a sense. But I can't help but feel a twinkle of optimism shown in Inuo. With the ending sequence set in modern day, with the spirits of the younger Tomna and Inuo reenacting their first interaction that led to their stardom play out once again. It really goes to show how strong the artistic spirit is by highlighting Inuo and Tomna doing what they love and living for themselves, crafting stories and creating work that achieves a sense of immortality that grows beyond their creators and anyone's oppressive control. In terms of delivery, I think this film stands out amongst a lot of things I've seen. 
In particular, I think the visual and perspective storytelling from both Tone and Inuo were done perfectly. Before the two met, their points of view were told through contrasting cameras. Tomna being blind is depicted in wide paintbrush strokes, with sounds such as singing biwa priests and the rain being highlighted as silhouette impressions through Tomna's senses. Inu O, on the other hand, has his perspective depicted similar to a keyhole camera, racing across streets and rooftops to everyone else's horror in order to reconcile himself to his ostracization by leaning into alienating behavior. Overall, Inu O was definitely a treat to watch. To be entirely honest, I didn't even know the film was out until I saw the trailer before watching the One Piece film in cinemas. But being a Mahasaki Yuasa film, I had to watch it. And damn, was it sure worth my time. It's been a while since a film as refreshing as this came out, and I definitely did not expect someone to make a film blending rebellious rock with traditional Japanese theater. If you got this far into the video, please go check out Inu O. If not a great film with themes of artistic freedom, art versus oppression, and the immortal nature of music, at least it will be an experience like no other.